how do we get clients? That's, you know, that's something we all want more of. You know, even if you've got clients, maybe you want better clients, maybe you want different clients. So this is all stuff that you're going to be able to kind of take and run with. There's 30 different things that you can do. Well, there's millions of different things you can do, but there's, there's 30 different tips that I've got for you. I've kind of, I've broken them down into longer term strategies um, that get clients. I've got them, uh, I've also got the ones that you can do now um, to get clients. And then there are also ones, things that you can do to get clients if you haven't got an audience, because I do appreciate some of the longer term strategies. They take a bit of time to kind of kick in. Um, let's have a look, sorry. I'm just gonna switch on the chat so I can see. The first thing I will say about finding clients, and these are not kind of knee jerk reaction, like, oh my God, I just need to sell to anyone now. The reason I'm gonna start with the long-term strategy is the reason that I'm gonna do that is because I think anybody in their business needs to be looking at how do we make this business sustainable? Like, how does this look over the long term? Because I promise you, if you are always in that space of, God, now I need to go and find more clients. I need to go and find more clients. It's really, really difficult to run your business long term. And that's when you find people are like just getting really stressed out, getting overwhelmed, burning out, all of those things that we know happen with small businesses all the time. So some of the longer term ones, you might think, Do you know what? They're not going to work for me. But I did them with Simon's business. And when I started working with Simon, although he had a successful business, he didn't have a website to speak of. He didn't have an audience. He, he wasn't networking. He didn't have this kind of massive audience that people assume you would have when you've been in business. I think he'd been in business for about 10 years um, by that point. So it was like starting from scratch with him and, and all of the stuff that I'm going to tell you has worked. And I'll, I'll kind of give you examples as I go through. So um, that's that. Right. So. Um, the first one of the long-term strategies is to interview your past clients. And the reason that I suggest this to people is because it's a really nice way of getting testimonials. People love to be heard. People love to have to tell their own stories, to tell their own experiences. It's a really nice way to get live testimonials without them feeling awkward. Because if you ask someone to record you a testimonial, I promise you it's going to feel really awkward and staged. Um, it's a nice way to kind of showcase who your ideal client is. So if you pick like your favorite clients or the people that you love to work with and you start interviewing them, ask them about your service or your product, whatever it is that you sell and the experience of working with you, that's a really nice way to get people interested, to promote what it is that you do in a really non-salesy way and to build your audience as well. Because if you, if you have clients who have big social media followings, you'll get people interested who aren't in your current audience. So it's kind of quite a few of the ones that I'm going to share with you are kind of on that edge of being either something you can do now or it's a long term or, you know, they kind of, they fit into all three of those kind of lead generating strategies. The next one is to, oh, the other thing that's really nice about interviewing your clients is if you feel really awkward being on social media, doing lives and stuff like that, it's quite nice to be the interviewer because you're not the one who's having to talk. So it's quite a nice way to kind of ease yourself into being live on, on social media as well. The next one is to revamp your services guide. Um, if you have a services guide, if you don't have one, make yourself a services guide. Tell people what it is that you do, all the different ways that they can work with you and kind of describe what those services are and not just what the benefits are, but the transformations that they have. So I've got, I'm just gonna kind of flick through see who I've got here. Um, let me just, yeah, so I'm gonna, okay. So I'm gonna give quite a few. In fact, actually in the chat, if you can just put what it is that you do and I will give you some different examples based on who I've got here. Cause I know I've got quite a lot of yoga teachers here, but I'm aware I've got some coaches in the room as well. So 
I'll give lots of different examples so that you can you can see what it is. So with your services, it might be that you have a beginner's course. It might be that you have, so I'm looking at Lauren, I know you've got aerial yoga. There's lots of information about that that people might need to know. So I know you put up a post a couple of weeks ago and it was like, come to this, but don't come if you've never come to me before. You know, this is this is for experienced people. So I think it's it's quite nice for people to see what it is that you have available. You can give them a bit more information in that. But it's it's a really nice way to kind of get your brand message in there as well. You can get your voice in there, your approach, your philosophy, all of those things in a kind of really lovely document. Um, you can do them in Canva. You can do them for free and you can, you know, you can buy beautiful templates for not very much money on creativemarket.com or you can go to Etsy. You might spend 20 quid, but you've then got this beautifully kind of branded service document that when someone says, you know, have you got any classes that I can come to, you know, or what, what coaching services have you got? You can say, I'll send you, I'll send you my service guide, you know, and you can send that over to them and then they can, you know, they can go through it and they can see all the different ways of working with you. Um, the next thing to do would be an online audit and have a look at, so this runs across your, your website if you have one, your Google My Business, which if you don't have one, you absolutely need to have, uh, and your social media. And I want you to look at all of them and think, how easy is it to do business with, it, with me? How easy do I make it for someone to do business with me? So how far have they got to get down that page before it says, this is how you contact me, or these are my services, or these are the classes that I have available this week. This is what's going on. That stuff generally tends to get hidden, especially on websites. You know, really, you should have a call to action above the fold. And that means before somebody has to start scrolling. So the first thing they see on that screen should be what you do, who you help, get in touch, or book a class, you know, or see my classes, see what's available, make it really, really easy for people. And that's a really quick, easy thing to do. The other thing is ask someone else to do it. So maybe ask your nan or your mum or someone who you know, who's really like not very good with technology and say, book a class with me, or how quickly can you find my services? And if they're struggling with it, you need to do something to make it easier for them. You need to make it more obvious what you do and then make it more obvious how they can do business with you. Um, the next one is to optimize your social media. So after you've done your audit, then go back in and look at, okay, have I got everything updated? Does my bio have a link to book with me or a link to a, a link tree? If you've got a link tree, um, from your Instagram bio, which is just a page that's got all the different, you know, it might have links to your blogs that you're referencing. It might have, you know, how to book with me. It might have something about a retreat that you're running. Make sure that it's really obvious what it is that you want people to do. If you've got 10 million different calls to action, they're going to really struggle to make that decision. So maybe just have sort of three things on there, three to five five max. You don't want to be giving people any more options than that because they get confused. And there's a, a kind of saying in sales is that a confused mind always says no. The second we get confused, we kind of like, we freeze and then we don't do anything. So make sure that your, your social media looks good. You know, even your personal social media pages, you should have links to your website. You should have links to what you do make you know make use of the cover pages that you've got in there so you know you can again use something like canva just make sure it's obvious what you do and how people can work with you put some calls to action in there update your photos you know make it really lovely because your social media is a shop front so make sure that your shop front doesn't look like something from five years ago or you know have like dodgy selfies on there or drunk photos or angry um, political rants and stuff like that. Like, you know, you can, you can actually make those posts um, secret or you can make them only available to family and friends. I recommend doing that if you, you know, if you are prone to the odd rant, 
um, then, then maybe kind of like hide that from people who aren't your close family and friends because from a business perspective, unless that's your thing and unless that's part of your brand, you probably want to hide that. Uh, the next thing is to make sure you've got an email list. Um, the, it was a perfect example of why you need to have this last week. Instagram went down for me for about three days. So for three days, and I had, I'd done a live training on the Monday, and then I had a take, in fact, it was down for me for four days. So I had a live training on the Monday, and I was, I could get into my Instagram. And then I had a takeover on the Friday where I took over somebody else's Instagram. I could not contact any of those people that had started following me in that time. So I lost a huge opportunity to make relationships with people, to remind people of who I was, you know, all of those things. If I'd had them on an email list, I could have still contacted them. You know, I wouldn't have been reliant on Instagram sorting out all of their um you know sorting out all of their tech problems um i've got a quick question regarding email lists either now or later um okay gabby do you want to jump on and ask me your question about email lists no you can unmute yourself hi sorry sorry um, my main worry about email lists is um, GDPR. That's the only reason I haven't put it together because I wasn't sure what consent I exactly need to ask um, people from. I've got a lot of emails, but I'm scared of actually putting it together as an email list. So I don't so, know. Um, so the, the, best way to, the best way to build an email list is to, is to offer somebody something in return for getting on that list because you can use something like MailChimp, MailerLite, pretty much all of the, of the email um, platforms now have GDPR built in. So they'll have that kind of double opt-in where people have to tick a box to say, I accept being, you know, being on this list, I accept that I'm going to get emailed and I'm okay with that. So they kind of, if you use something like MailChimp, they're not the best, um, they're good for starting out or get, a VA, you know, or a tech VA or someone else to, to set that up. But generally when people are opting in, the other thing that you can do is you can email the people, if you've got emails for people, you can email them and say, I'm starting an email list. This is what you're gonna be getting. You know, would you like to be on there? Would you like me to add you to that? And then they've got the option to say yes or no, or you can put the link to join the email list on there. Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you. Okay. Cool, if you can just mute yourself and then we'll crack on. Um, the next thing to do would be to perfect your current client client process. So, and I'll, I'll get on to why this is a long-term strategy because there's a shorter strategy that's kind of linked to this one, but, but generally happy clients stay with us. They spend more money with us they book more services with us and they recommend us to their friends. So, you know, if you, I'm gonna be really old school now, but if you think about the Carlsberg advert, you know, and, and they'll, they'll probably rerun it at Christmas, but you know, it's like, everything's just the best ever. It's the best ever experience, you know? And I think like, if you think about, I don't know, like you can wave at me, who's seen Bridesmaids, the film? anyone seen it yeah okay so when the um when the posh friend throws the uh throws the wedding shower the bridal shower and um and they open the they open the, the uh invitation and there's like music playing and it's just like there's like a little spritz of something there's flipping butterflies going everywhere they go to the party and everyone gets a freaking puppy like that is an incredible customer experience that's the kind of experience where if people have that with you they're never going anywhere they're not going anywhere else they don't ever want to go anywhere else Pete's laughing yeah you're gonna have to get a load of puppies for your yoga classes maybe a goat that works outdoor yoga and you get your own goat but you know I mean it's it's silly but if you think about you can't you can't take the goats home sadly 
oh that sucks it's really annoying but see so you probably won't go back there now <laughs> <laughs> I teach it so I get to do it a lot but people always want to leave with the goats <laughs> you know a bit I mean that's obviously a really extreme example but if you think of your customer experience and the client process and think about how you could potentially improve that you know what could you be doing to make that even better you know like I think um Laura does this so so well uh, at Christmas like when she does her kind of Christmas experience it's really lovely there's always something kind of unexpected in there and it doesn't have to be big like it really doesn't it can be something as small as somebody coming you know thinking of like Christmas theme things you know sending some obviously at the moment with Covid and the lockdowns it might be sending them something in the post like really tiny just to let them know that you're thinking of them um, it might be that if they come to an in-person class if we're ever allowed to do that again you have like a beautiful goodie bag of things that you've put together for them so there's lots of different things that you can be doing. And again, in the long term, these are long term strategies and I am going to get to the short term ones, but these are long term strategies that get people, you know, that turn them from clients to raving fans. Like it doesn't have to be an expensive thing. It doesn't have to be um, something that takes loads of time, but just something that you've put a lot of thought into and something that really reflects you. So, you know, it could be like you know they get some like a little bag of seeds or something like that you know and you build that into the metaphor of of the class that they're having you know all of these things can be really tailored to you to make it really unique um the next one is an absolute winner um and that is to create a tool or a resource now this can look completely different for different um, for different people. If you had a software company, you see it a lot with software companies. So someone like Canva, they've created like a color picker where you can upload an image and it picks out the colors from that image so you can build a color palette from that. Um, you have like font generating um, software. There's lots of different things like that. I've seen a lot of business coaches do like calculators so based on the size of my audience, what kind of ad budget do I need to spend? Like there's lots of things like that. Um, in Simon's business, so my husband, I work as a director in my, in my husband's business as well. He's a financial advisor. We've created calculators, like really simple calculators, um, which was actually a lot more fun than you think because we actually like went through and worked out like the cost of owning a dog. Like the cost of going on holiday, the cost of doing all the kind of the things that you wanted, like the fun stuff you want to do in retirement. And, you know, people can just go through. Um, Emma said, are the tools the same thing as free white papers? No. So, so the tools and the resources are things that help people to achieve a certain result. So with the calculators, if they don't know how much money they need to retire, they can go on and they can tick, oh yeah, I want to own a dog. Uh, I, I want to do yoga twice a week. I want to, uh, I want to um, go for coffee. You know, all the kind of little things that you don't really think of when you're budgeting, but you're like, actually, these are really important. You know, if I can't do yoga twice a week in retirement, what's the point in retiring? You know, um, so yeah, so tools like that. I've built a resource page because doing what I do, there's not many tool type things that I can, that I can do, but I have on my website got, a resource page which started off at like 190 I think I've probably got about 210 215 different tools and resources for small businesses so there are things like uh, stock image like different places to find like beautiful stock images there are email providers like all the kind of things that people ask me for like they would say oh you know who would you recommend for this or where can I find this I've got a whole page on my website with all of those different resources available in one place. Um, you know, for, for the yoga teachers, for any kind of health things, it might be, you know, the books that you would recommend to people. What podcasts would you recommend? Where can I find great yoga music? You know, I mean, God, that's a huge one. Um, you know, and, and there's so many different things when you start to think about how that might apply to, to your business. Um, so that's a really nice one. Um, 
And again, you know, the nice thing about all these things is in the long term, they bring people to your website. You know, they bring the, the, the kind of missing puzzle piece here in, into how you turn that into actually getting leads is you either make that into an opt-in. So people have to opt in to get access to it. Then they're on your email list and then you can start emailing them. Then you can make an offer to them. Um, or you, you know, you offer it in exchange and you have calls to action as you kind of go through. Um, the next one is to write a guide. And this is something that is, was like just, it made such a huge, huge difference to our financial services business. Guides, it's not the same thing as white papers. White papers generally tend to be research-based. So you do some research or you collate some research and you give people access to that. Guides, it's really about, you know, answering a very specific, very kind of niche question or area and giving them lots of information. So, you know, if you were doing yoga teacher training, it might be everything you need to know before you become a yoga teacher, um, you know, or, the best the best kind of places to find xyz you know um i know like rachel's here rachel does a lot of essential oils but also like energy healing so it could be like with the essential oils like 10 essential oils to have in your home you know 10 essential oils for herbal medicine you know all of those kind of things um we do ones on very specific like pension products because it's actually really hard to get that information. And what we, what we actually did was took the information from about 10 different blog posts, collated it all into this sort of one ebook, people opt in and they get that information. And then we have you know, more information that's fed to them via email. So the whole thing is about how can I have a better client experience for people? They're coming with problems and I'm gonna show them that I can solve them and that's how you start building that relationship with people. Um, an ebook is another, so that's really a kind of like a very kind of elongated version of your guide. These things work and these things work at all levels. I don't know how many of you know Brendan Bouchard. He is massive in the personal development space. He's kind of like the, the godfather at the moment. Like his business is worth tens and tens of millions. He trains thousands hundreds of thousands of people in personal development every year his strategy now is to write a book a year because he knows when he writes a brendan bouchard for anyone who missed it i love him he's so he's from montana um and he's this super kind of peppy american guy um with so much heart and and his trainings are incredible he's got a podcast called the influencer podcast which he's just launched everyone needs to be listening to that because there is gold in that at the moment. So much stuff like they've got some really big names in the kind of coaching industry and they are just sharing all of their knowledge. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like they could be selling that each one of those podcasts for you know a hundred pounds each because it's worth it for the training you get. Um, but yeah, he writes a book a year because he knows when he writes a book, People understand his process. They, he can, you know, he can talk about the problems. He can give case studies of people he's worked with. People have, you know, they build a rapport with him over those 300 pages of the book. He positions himself as the expert and he, you know, he then has that lovely position where people have read his book. They want to know more or they want, you know, more of a kind of in-depth experience with him and they're willing to pay for it. So it's a really nice way that you can solve people's problems, give them all the answers that they want, but then leave the door open to say, if you liked this and you want to know more about this, you can contact me. I have a course, I have a program, I have, you know, a, an in-person class happening, whatever. It's, an, it's a lovely way to kind of connect with people. Um, another one is add an automated booking um, system to your website, to your social media. So something like Calendly, we've used Vsita in the past, we're just switching to Dubsado, but something that just allows somebody to book in. Obviously, if you've got um, yoga, like if you've got classes that you want people to book in, then you'd want like a class specific um, software where people can just sign up. 
but that's really important because if people have to email you and go back and forth it takes away their kind of ability to be spontaneous and just think yes I'm going to book in for that. You know, you need to make it so, so simple for people. Um, so that's the nine long-term strategies. How are we doing for time? Right, I'm going to have to smash through these because we are running out of time already. So, okay, we're going to go through the 15 things you can do now. Um, and then I'm going to go through the things you can do if you don't have an audience, because I know some of you are newer, you are building your businesses and you're going to be looking for those as well. So the first thing is package your services. If you don't package your services, you end up having to sort of do things piecemeal. So you might fill a class or you might sell a one-to-one -one session with somebody for an hour, but then you're having to do that whole sales process again. And it is a lot of work. You know, you're almost going back to the start. Obviously you've built a bit of goodwill with someone if they've worked with you before, but you're constantly having to go back and say, okay, do you want to sign up for next week? Or do you want to book your next session? If you, if you package up your services, um, it's easier to add value because there's more things that you can bundle in there. It makes sense as a business. If you're selling somebody maybe a block of five or 10 things that so you can add other things in to kind of sweeten the deal for them, but it just makes it really easy. It also makes it easy then when you do your services guide to say, this is my package. And you can then have things at different price points, but it, it does make things easier when people say, okay, how do I work with you? You can go back and say this way, you've got this option, this option, and this option. And it makes it really simple for people. Um, the next thing, and this kind of leads into the reason I, I led with package your services is because it kind of links in with quite a few of these other ones in here. So your existing clients, are the best chance you have for selling more things. So look at the existing clients that you have and think about additional services that you could offer them, add-ons and upgrades. So what other things, how, are, how else could you help these people? How else can you serve them? So in my business, I kind of have three specific areas that, that I deal with. I have, I have my brand design and strategy, I have my marketing consultancy, and my search engine optimization. So if somebody's done the brand stuff with me, very often they also need the marketing consultancy, maybe not at the same time, um, and maybe they don't have the budget at the same time to have those things. I've had people that have come to me because they've wanted the search engine optimization, and then when that's working and they've got clients coming through the door, then they'll come back and they'll do the branding. So. Think of different ways that you can work with people. Um, I mean, certainly like with the with yoga, if you have somebody who's gone through a beginner's course, then maybe you want to offer them an, an experienced yoga course or, you know, an in-depth. I know Laura does an immersion with people. There's lots of different ways you can kind of package your services that, um, you know, that give you that opportunity to sell more to the same people. One thing I was going to show you, um, I, have, I have a prop, hang on. So for anyone who voted, the chair won, by the way. Um, so when you're thinking about packaging your services, um, and this I will get into this a little bit later, but there is nothing people love more than free shit. They love it. Um, so you don't, when you're packaging your services, you don't have to think about, okay, well, I'll offer them this and I'll give them a discount. Sometimes people want exclusivity. They want things that other people can't get. Um, great example of this, and I'm sorry if I keep going back to yoga, but um, there is a great example of this. Laura, I think it's in her immersion thing. They get a, a yoga bolster. Now, when I go to class, and obviously this is back in the days when we could go to class, but when I go into class and people have got yoga bolsters, I'm like, I want a yoga bolster. <laughs> so I'm thinking I need to sign up to that immersion at some point because I want a yoga bolster. Now I could go out and buy a yoga bolster, but it doesn't have that same value. It's, you know, you, you don't just get that. It's exclusive and you're then part of a group you know you're, you're part of this kind of secret club people that have got 
yoga bolsters. Um, you know, but if you think about the, the difference between, you know, just signing up to a six week yoga course, a yoga beginners course, if you think about that versus if you sign up to this course, every week of this course, you're going to get something else that's going to help you with your, you know, with your yoga practice. So you'll be able to bring these things to class, but you'll, able, you'll be able to practice at home, you know, so week one, we get them one of these and I think I looked on yoga matters and if you buy 20 of these you can get them for about three or four pounds each you know but the perceived value of something like this is huge you know so all of a sudden you're not competing with other people that are doing beginners yoga classes because you're actually building this whole practice for them you're helping them extend their practice you are giving them a different kind of viewpoint um, ways of practicing at home, you know, you can do, um, you know, and it's the same, like if you were, you know, if you were doing coaching, we, you can, you can have different things on different weeks. Say, so, okay, well, week two, I'm going to give you access to this training, you know, which is exclusive. You can't get this training anywhere else. Um, you know, week three, I'm going to give you access to some scripts, uh, you know, or meditations or whatever, you know, there's lots of different things that you can add in there that people can't get elsewhere. Um, anyway, back to the clients. Um, so the next place to look is potential clients. So um, people who have inquired in the past, but who didn't sign up. So Re, you know, go back, reapproach them, maybe say I've revamped my services guide and I just wanted to send it to anyone who's inquired this week, you know, this year to see if, you know, if you're interested in working with me now or if you want to book anything for next year. Um, past clients as well, so this is another one, follow up with past clients. So like I said, you know, with me, I've got three different areas in my business. I can go out to all of my past clients and say, here's my services guide, you know, I loved working with you. Can I help you in any other way? You know, do you have any issues with your business at the moment that I could help you with? That's a really nice way of reaching out to people. And if they've worked with you before, you've already got that relationship with them. You know, you've got that no like and trust factor. So, and you know, and if you've got an ebook, if you've done any other kind of longer term strategies, you've got an excuse to reach out to them. You might say, I wrote this ebook, and I just wanted to send it to you, you know, I just wanted to send it to all of my past clients as a thank you. Um, so that's a nice way to kind of open those conversations. Um, now you don't have to do discounts, but sometimes if you just want to get people, if you, if you know that the money is the issue, um, then offering a one-time offer is a really nice way to kind of get that little kind of um, injection of, of cash into your business and get clients through the door. So maybe send a one-time offer to past clients uh, or potential clients that didn't purchase and say, this is an, you know, this is an offer I've got available. If it's of interest, I'd love to hear from you. Here's the link to book. <laughs> make it easy. Don't make them jump through hoops. Um, so the next one is a flash sale. This is very timely. Next Friday is Black Friday. The Monday following that is Cyber Monday. So you will start to see offers everywhere. People expect to see offers everywhere at this time of year. So, you know, do what feels good for your business. You don't have to jump on the Black Friday train. You can have a, a flash sale that you don't link to Black Friday and just say, I'm doing a flash, you know, flash discount this week. I'm doing a end of lockdown celebration um, you know, package it any way that feels good for your business. Um, but having a flash sale is a really nice way to get people through the door quickly because scarcity makes people want to buy, you know, especially if they think, oh, you know, I don't have very long to get this offer. It's going to go away again. It's a nice way to get people through the door. Um, generally, flash sales are sort of 24, 48 hours. You can run them for a week, just something that feels good. And what that does is it doesn't devalue the, the value of your services. So, you know, you don't want to become DFS. You know, you don't want to become one of those businesses that they are um, discounting their products so often that you walk in and you look at the price tag and you think, 
that's not what it's, you know, that's not what it's going to cost. So that's not what it's worth. It's worth half of that because that's what they charge most of the time. Um, so flash sales are really nice for that because what they do is they, they retain that integrity for your price and your value. Um, the do, 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 yeah, next one. And again, this is something else that you can do to kind of retain that integrity in your pricing and your value is to offer an exclusive incentive to new clients and existing clients. Um, if you're going to offer a, an incentive to your new clients, I would always say try and mirror that to existing clients. Because if you don't, what it can end up doing is kind of leave a bit of a bitter taste in the mouth. It's the whole kind of insurance industry where actually you end up thinking, well, I'm a loyal client and you're offering a better price to everybody else, but not me. Like that sucks. Um, so yeah, offering an, an incentive and, and like we sort of spoke about, it doesn't need to be a discount. It can be access to an exclusive training. It can be um, early bird access to something that you know is going to sell out. You know, you know that everyone is going to want it like a, um, I'm just trying to think like the um, advent calendars, like the beauty advent calendars, like they, they always sell out. Like there are some cracking deals out there and you know they're always going to be gone so quickly. You know, if you've got a retreat or a training which you know is going to sell out, then maybe have exclusive access that's linked to something else. So if you sign up to my membership, you get exclusive access to all of my retreat places before anyone else. You get like, you know, two days head start kind of thing. Um, recommend a friend. So if you don't have a recommend a friend offer, I highly advise that you have one because it's a really nice way. Like people are far more likely to buy on recommendation of a friend or even an acquaintance uh, or someone on, on the internet. They're far more likely to buy from any of those things than from an advert because we want, you know, we want, somebody else to kind of take that risk of that sales decision out of our out of our minds for us um so so having a recommend a friend offer it can be a discount it can be a gift what works quite well is if they get something so the person that is recommending somebody else gets something but the person who's being recommended to also gets something that's a kind of really nice win-win situation where people don't feel like they're being salesy because it's like, oh, well, I'm only recommending this to you because I'm going to get a 50 quid John Lewis voucher. It's like, no, I'm recommending this to you because you're going to get a discount or you're going to get a, a bonus sort of access to something. Um, but I also get something, which is quite nice. Um, the next one, da, 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 da. sorry, I'm just moving my notes up. Offer an intensive training session. So like this, for instance, um, the, the, the great thing about having intensive, say, um, intensive training sessions is that you can solve a very specific problem. So it doesn't, it kind of is almost an additional service from everything else that you do. So um, it might be that you look at, um, I'm gonna go back to yoga, and it might be that you would, you know, you do an intensive two hour glute training um, for all those psychos out there that wanna tone yoga into, <laughs> into like CrossFit, um, you know, or you do a lower back session or something like that. Um, you know, for, for a coach, you might do an intensive session to get new clients. You might do an intensive session to audit your business um, or audit your, you know, process um, for, I'm just looking at the, at the screen, you know, so for, um, for Rachel, it might be that you do an intensive session, like an intensive healing session for a specific thing. So you might look at like healing your inner child or something like that, but it has to be something that's specific that people will identify with. So um, one thing I see a lot is that we will use language that our customers wouldn't use. Like they wouldn't recognize their problem in the way that we are articulating it. So it has to be, you know, so for instance, if you did a lower back problem, so if you would say, 
we're going to do a two hour lower back, lower back release, you know, for, for people with back pain. They will recognize that. If you were to say, I'm going to do a two hour QL uh, release session, people will have no idea. You know, they, they, they have no idea why they, their QL muscle is, is a problem or that it is even a problem, you know, or a psoas release or something like that. It's what you're going to teach but it's not the problem that it's solving. So look at the problem you're solving for people and how they would language that. And that's what you package it up as. Um, a group program or a course is a really nice way to get extra clients in. It's generally something that you can offer at a lower rate than your one-to-ones. Um, so it's quite a nice, and again, you can package it in a way that you're either solving a specific problem, serving a specific part of the market, um, you know, or kind of condensing some of your services in, into one for people. That's a really nice thing to put together. And again, it's something else that you can be going out to people and saying, I have this, I have this service. The best way to get more clients is to make more offers. So the more, not that you want to end up with like 10,000 different things that you do, but if you're sat there thinking, I can't, I, I have no clients at the moment. I have no leads. I, I literally cannot see where my next month's money is gonna come from. That's when you kind of look at these. That's when you look at this list and you think, okay, what can I do? And you start, you know, you start at number one from the 15 things you can do now. And you think, all right, I'll, let's try that. Okay, that didn't work. Let's try the next thing. Um, Hosting a challenge or a live training is a great thing to do. You'll see so many of them, and this happens in the coaching world because it works, because very often you'll see them done free. I've seen challenges that are charged at a fairly low rate, maybe like $50, um, and it's, it's just a way of getting new people into your audience and giving them a bit of a taster of what it is that you do and what they're gonna experience with you. So you kind of, you know, it's, it's like going to the cheese counter in Sainsbury's when that used to happen. Um, but you know, you can you can just give people a bit of a taster of what it's like to work with you, what your energy's like, and then at the end of it, that is when you then sell them either onto your one-to-one -one sessions or your group program. Um, you can host a webinar like this. So you know, your your webinars, your live trainings can just be turning up on Facebook every week. Just turning up on Facebook once a week and doing a short live training. That's a good way of time to build your audience, get people to know, like and trust you and buy from you. Um, you can do if you host a webinar, it's kind of that one off. If it's a bit more one off than doing your live training. So again, with a webinar, you're solving a specific problem. Like if I just done if I just said, oh, I'm doing a marketing webinar, everyone have been like, oh, right. You know, you have to think about what problems do people have and how am I going to solve them. Um, offering a live Q and A is quite nice as well. So if you do, if you do a lot of live trainings on Facebook and you show up and you you teach people specific things each week, um, it's quite nice sometimes to do a Q and A and have people turn up and say, ask me specific questions. So you know, if you've got a problem in your business, you can you can ask me specific questions linked to that you know if you have specific questions about your yoga practice if you have specific questions about what essential oils you can use on your kids or what essential oils are safe to use if you have pets like those things turn up at this time and i will answer all of your questions and again it's it's kind of a bit of a a, a taster session for working on that one-to-one -one level with you um referral partners this is huge. It's a huge, huge way of getting people into your business. So in the coaching industry, they have, um, like if you do, if you're an affiliate for somebody's group program or course, the, the fee is generally around 40%. So if you're a referral partner or an affiliate, if somebody buys your course, through one of your affiliate partners, you're given 40% of, of that course value. And if you think about, you know, these kind of high level coaches who are maybe selling like 2000 pound um, trainings, 
you get 40% of that for effectively doing nothing. Now, I'm not suggesting you go and hand over 40% of your profit, but it might be that you have people who are in, you have people in your network who are in kind of complementary um, kind of areas. So for Rachel, Rachel is a healer. She offers one-to-one -one healing, um, but she also does a lot of the essential oils and things like that. Um, she trains people, she's a Reiki master. She would be somebody who would be great to tie up with, you know, if, you, if you're a yoga teacher, because you don't have any crossover there. You know, as a yoga teacher, you teach yoga, you do those things. It might be that, <laughs> Rachel's putting thumbs up, but you know, it might be that actually you can help each other. You know, I think that that mind body connection is huge. It might be, that you know, Rachel is seeing someone who's got a real kind of like sticking energetic problem. And it's like, do you know what? You need to move your body, you know, you need to flow through this, you need to, you need to have some kind of action that is linked to all of the kind of spiritual work that we're doing. Um, you know, with coaches, if you're a brand designer, you might want to tie up with a web design, you know, web developer and have that kind of referral program where you are referring people to each other. So if you can find people who are linked to, you know, linked to your industry, but not in your industry, that is a great way of getting new people through the door. And that's something, you know, it, it's a great way of getting people now, because if I were to say to any of you, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you 200 quid if someone walks through the door and you're like, well, I know like five people who need your services. Yeah, I'll refer them all. You know, that's a great way of them getting money into their business. It's a great way of me getting people into my business. I'm not doing that yet, but I will let you know if I do. Um, and discovery calls, like offering discovery calls is a great way to get people through the door now. So not just saying phone me for a free 15 minute call, putting together a discovery call that has a specific um, end, you know, has a specific transformation in mind. So if you were to speak to, um, if you were to offer a, a discovery call that solves a specific problem. So for me, I might offer a free black brand clarity call. So on that call, we will map out what your vision is for your business and what you are trying to achieve you know there's lots more to brand clarity but i might say you know we can we can map that out so by the end of the call you will be able to introduce yourself to somebody and say hi i'm pete i'm a yoga teacher and i specialize in <laughs> i've just picked the first first person on my thing you know but i specialize in working with x to do y you know, so that's what I'm going to teach you on that call. And that's what your discovery calls need to do. Not just kind of phone me up and say, oh, yeah, you know, this is what I do. And these are my services. That's why you've got a services guide. Your discovery call should be about building that rapport and showing somebody that you understand. So it might be if you've got new people coming to your yoga class, what you do is you jump on a, a 20 minute Zoom class. Obviously, if you can do this in person, brilliant. You know, but you, if you, you know, and this works with higher end sort of products rather than like one-off classes. But if you're running a, you know, a six-week course or a, a three-month course and it has that kind of higher price point, then it makes sense to say, do you know what? Let's jump on a 20-minute call because what I want to do is I want to, I want to look at your body. I want to be able, I'm going to ask you to do a few different things because I need to check your alignment. I need to make sure that you know that I'm not going to be asking you to do anything um, that's going to be too difficult for you. I'm going to you know so I can offer alternative poses for you that would be better for your body. You know if you were doing pregnancy yoga, this would be perfect. You know I'm I'm going to look at where you're at and I'm going to tailor it to you. So there's these discovery calls can be a great way of sort of really building rapport with people adding value to what it is that you do because at the end of that they've already had that experience of you being able to solve their problem so they you've already achieved something at the end of that call like rather than them just kind of phoning and thinking yeah I quite like them yeah they were nice you know they've come away and they've got something out of it so they're like 
yeah, I, I didn't know that before. I wasn't aware of this. So it's, it's just kind of taking them from just kind of passively chatting to them to this, what I'm going to do. And there's an added perceived value as well of if you get on a call for 15 minutes, I'm going to solve a problem for you. So oh, we're doing quite well. This is good. So then we've got six things that you can do to get clients if you don't have an audience. So if you're new, and I, I fully appreciate because I was there when I started my business, although I'd been in marketing and branding for such a long time, I didn't have an audience. I never used to use my, my social media. I just wasn't really that kind of person. So I didn't have a massive audience that I could sell to. Um, I touched on referral partners. So referral partners and affiliates are a great way to, um, to, to get clients if you don't have an audience. I did this at the start of lockdown. So um, Ria and I, I don't know how many of you know Ria, she's gorgeous, um, but Ria Michelle and I were supposed to be doing a training for the Royal Photographic Society. We put it all together. The two of us were supposed to be doing a two day training and it got postponed because of COVID. Uh, so we decided to pivot it and actually it became something completely different. Um, but we put together this training and we were really excited about it because we were like, this is really good. This is really, really awesome. And my coach at the time, um, we, we were just going into lockdown. The world was, had just gone into lockdown. Um, she didn't have anything planned for her group. She kind of didn't know how to help people. And she offered us her group, which had, I think about, in, in, across the different platforms, there was access to probably about 15,000 people. Um, and she just said, take over my group, run, run your challenge in my group, because actually everyone in my group needs this. So they'll benefit from the free challenge. Um, and then she was on a referral offer. So, she, you know, every, every course that we sold at the end of that challenge, she got a kickback for. So it's a great way if you know people to, to get in touch with them and say, I'm, I'm launching a course or have a program, or, you know, if you are, uh, if you're a yoga teacher and you know a local chiropractor or someone like that to say, here's my referral card. Every time somebody contacts me with one of these, I will give you X, Y, Z. And it might even just be free yoga classes. You know, it doesn't have to be a monetary um, exchange. Um, so that's a really, really good way of doing it. And I highly recommend that everybody look at, at ways they can get, bring that in. The next one, and these are, these are short term measures. This is not something you're going to want to do long term. Create a listing. So if you have classes, if you have a webinar you're trying to promote, if you have a, a kind of single class that you want to promote, create a listing. So there's loads of Facebook groups. Um, there's loads of local groups that you can add these listings to add a listing link to where they can book. That's a really nice way of getting access to a massive audience that you wouldn't have had access to before. Again, the next one, this is a short term one, but can be really, really good if you manage it well. Groupon and pl like places like Groupon and Woucher are a great place, again, to get access to an audience that you wouldn't have normally got access to. Especially if you're a local based business, uh, you've got people that are on there that are looking for a deal. So you have to accept that this is probably a, at best, cost neutral. Um, so the first people that you're going to get through the door, you're probably not going to make any money on. Like the, your, your advertising cost is, is kind of, or the money you get through is going to cover the advertising cost. But what you can do is then convert those people into long-term customers. So I, years and years ago, I, um, it wasn't Groupon, but it was the same principle. I had somebody come up to me. I was sat outside the bar that I worked at at the time and they were, they were in their kind of like sales garb and they were selling access to a local hairdresser that had just opened. So the, the package that they put together was a color and a cut. The next one was a half price color. Then there was a half price cut. Then there was, there was a, um, oh God like a um, fake tan. I was about 18 at the time. There was fake tan, there was nails, it was all these different things. And it was a ridiculous price, like crazy ridiculous price. And I was just like, oh, you seems a bit dodgy, you're selling to me on the street. But I went with it because I was 18. 
Um, but it was an incredible deal. It was an incredible deal for me, but it was an incredible deal with them for them because they were one of the most expensive hairdressers in Southampton. And I stayed with them for about four years. So I, I got all of the, the kind of low price, like budget freebies at the start. And then I went, I kept going back. So, you know, I mean, they did a good job. That's why I kept going back to them, you know, but it was, you know, for them, they had to invest that, you know, they had to say, okay, we, it's going to cost us this. We're not going to make any money for the first month. But if we make those customers happy, we will then have those customers for years. So it is a nice way, but you have to manage it in the right way. So if you've got people coming in on a Groupon deal, make sure that you are there, you are ready to get them onto an email list, that you are ready with a, a service or a product that they can buy from you once they've gone past that. Um, the next one is borrow an audience. This isn't the same as having an affiliate or a referral. Borrowing an audience can be as simple as doing a podcast with somebody or doing a, an Instagram live with somebody else. So like I was saying earlier about having people who are in kind of complementary um, areas that you can work with. So for Rachel, Rachel were to do a, an interview with a yoga teacher talking about how yoga can help that spiritual kind of um, transition or transcendence or what, you know, linking to somebody else that you can talk about a, a common theme. What that would do is give everybody in Rachel's audience access to everybody in the other's audience and vice versa. So it's a really, really nice way of getting access to an audience that you wouldn't normally get access to. So it's all very well having lots of conversations with other yoga teachers. That's great, but you're competing in the same area. You know, if you were a yoga teacher and you interviewed a psychologist or you were to interview a dietitian, that's when you start getting access to a, an audience that you don't already have access to. So that's a really nice strategy to put in place. You know, with podcasts, always make sure that you have an offer, even if that offer is, <laughs> even if I'm laughing because the irony, I'm telling you to do all this stuff, I don't have an offer for you. I told you that at the start, but you know, have an offer that you are taking those people onto. So send them to an ebook, send them to a blog post, send them to a download, um, get them into your audience. You know, you guys are already in my audience, so that's brilliant. Um, but you know, make sure that when you're borrowing somebody else's audience that you fully take advantage of it, get them over to your audience because that's where you're gonna find your new clients. You know, if they're interested enough that they've come over and they've joined your audience, they're interested in what you're doing. So make sure you've got a way to contact them, make sure you have an easy way for them to work with you. Um, okay, we're down to the last two and then we're gonna have Q and A. Um, so networking online and offline. Obviously networking offline at the moment is slightly more difficult because we're in the middle of a lockdown. So that's not gonna happen unless you're networking with your neighbor over the fence. But when it starts to come back, networking is a really nice way of getting clients, getting access to other people's audiences, you know, building that rapport that you need to get new clients through the door. There is still quite a lot of online networking going on at the moment. Everything that's offline seems to have gone online. Um, so that's definitely worth pursuing. It's something you can get people through the door straight away. And it's also a long-term thing as well, because if you're building rapport with people there, they're going to refer you to other people. You know, it's that's the whole kind of vibe of networking. Like people are already in that. Um, referral space so they're used to referring people that they meet and they it's very easy for them so even if you go in even if you walk into a, a session and you think Do you know what none of these people are my ideal client you don't know who they're married to you know you don't know who they live next door to you don't know who they work with you don't know who their clients are they they could have people who are your ideal clients so networking online and offline is a great way to get new clients um, and the last way is to actively participate in groups. So if you don't have an audience and you know who your ideal client is, think about the Facebook groups, you know, or LinkedIn. I don't tend to use LinkedIn too much because it's not kind of where my clients hang out, but 
you know, if it is where your clients hang out, then go there, go where your ideal clients are, but actively participating in these groups, you know, answering people's questions, adding value, and then following up with them. So you don't have to kind of, I hate it, and I'm sure you will hate it as well. When somebody just friend requests you on Facebook, then they ask you a question, say, hey, I thought you looked really interesting and I'm just drawn to people. Tell me about yourself. It's like, I, <laughs> Rachel's laughing because this has obviously happened to her as well. But, you know, it's like, I don't need to tell you about myself. You can scroll down the first like six posts on Facebook and find out everything you need to know about me. Right. I like yoga. I post pictures of dogs. Like, you know, and I'm a brand designer. That's do you need to know much more about me? You know, you kind of can tell everything you need to know. What's important is the conversations you have with people, you know, just start messaging, you know, start commenting on their, on their posts, build that rapport. If they ask a question, give them the answer, but then maybe send them another message a couple of days later or the next week and say, how did you get on with that? Did it go okay? Did it work? You know, and they'll say, yeah, it did. Or mm, I kind of, I haven't tried it yet. And then you can be like, well, you definitely should. I'm going to message you in two days time to see if you've done it yet. You know, all of a sudden you go from being this kind of awkward, having this awkward, I don't know you at all, to having this really lovely rapport with somebody and, and having, you know, having a genuine friendship. And I've built so many genuine friendships with people I have never met in real life. You know, I've, I've, I've built relationships with people that I have a real genuine friendship and then I've met them in real life. Lauren, I haven't met you in real life yet, but it's definitely going to happen at the end of lockdown. You know, but it's, it's a lovely way to kind of build a rapport with people. So there are people everywhere who need your help. It's just making sure that you do it in the right way because just going into groups and kind of being that sharp of like, you're my ideal client, I'm going to go in and, and kind of just sell, sell, sell. Um, Emma's just asked a question. Would you message on comments or posts or in DMs or both? So, so both. And, and what I would do, if somebody's asked a question and it's, it's maybe personal or there's an element of it being personal, if you feel like it's a question that, could, that everybody's you know, dealing with, then answer it in the comments. Um, or if you feel like there's a kind of personal element to it, you can just comment on there and say, I completely understand. I've got a suggestion for you. I've DM'd it to you, you know, and do it that way so that, you know, they don't feel like you've just kind of like jumped at them, you know, or maybe just say like, I feel like it's a bit too personal to kind of share out here. So I'm going to DM you. There's a really nice way of doing it, but just make sure you're not one of those people. There's just like, hey, you look like my ideal client. So I'm going to awkwardly segue myself into a conversation with you and suddenly we're going to be friends. Like that just, like that doesn't work. Like it's like being the awkward person at the Christmas party. Like just kind of, you know, start a conversation, like see a commonality with them and have a conversation about that. You know, it's, it's so much better than, than actually going in and just trying to be the awkward salesperson. So incredibly, I am on time with it and we still have time for a QA. and a So um, I don't know if you want to put your questions or put your hands up in the chat and then I'll kind of, otherwise everyone will start talking at once and it will be a uh, hot mess. So um, yeah, hi Lauren, you're, you're on my screen. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you first and then we go through. But yeah, if you've got any questions, put them in the chat. Even if you have to go, put them in the chat because I can answer it and you can then, um, you'll see it on the replay as well. Um, oh, thanks, Jen. See you later. Um, okay, so, Lauren. Um, I'm going to go back to packaging services. Yes. Mostly. Um, so this isn't something other than like corporate packages and like one-to-ones. It's not something that I've really done. I don't tend to teach, obviously this is very yoga specific. Sorry, those of you on the chat who aren't yoga teachers. <laughs> um, but it's, um, I don't tend to do like courses as such. And with the nature of this year with like in-person, online, in-person, online, I'm really, really um, not keen on the idea of doing like a block because then people may not get far into the block, whether it's online or in person. And then I've got to change it or possibly refund. So 
would you how how could you get around something like that would you do maybe like a cluster package of this many classes a week or something like that it's tricky yeah I mean yeah I mean definitely when you're kind of going between like the online and the offline I mean I think at the moment I would probably look at packaging something that's off sorry that's online mm -hmm. and saying you know I'm, I'm going to do this we're going to run it over you could do it over a week I've seen a yoga teacher who's doing it and they're running it over the week this week this weekend um you know they've got like four days intensive it's this weekend they know they've blocked that time out they're going to be there showing up for the online stuff so yeah the online stuff um so what I would do is is probably think about that and say okay well if you don't want to tie yourself to doing loads of online stuff because you prefer doing it in person you know maybe just say okay well I know realistically we're not going to have we're not going to be back online we're not going to be back in person with people until January at the earliest if we're lucky you know from from the way that they're talking it's going to be February so you've got basically from now until February where you could say, okay, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And it might be that you sell people like a week at a time. So, you know, Laura in the past has done, um, you know, the introduction to yoga. She's done uh, like the yoga sutras, um, chakra yoga. There are so many different things. It could be that, you know, if you, if you work with runners that you do, you know, a, hamstring session for seven days we're going to focus on these you know and and you look at kind of packaging something you know in, in that respect and yeah. or you look at like yoga philosophy or something that maybe you feel works a bit better online um that could be maybe delivered in a bit more of a bite-sized way yeah so yeah you could t take this time to to delve a little bit deeper and get specific yeah. because you've got this like we're doing now like a q a thing that's cool yeah i mean it could be something as simple as how to build a yoga practice how to build that into your day because there's loads of people who love their yoga but they don't do it on a daily basis so maybe you know maybe you look at it okay like okay i'm going to teach you a morning practice like we're going to do a midday break from the desk practice on a different day like then we're going to do a a bedtime yoga routine like there's, there's lots of different ways that you could kind of package that I think for people thank you cool right um yeah um yeah so Emma's saying she'd sign up for a deep dive into Anasara um ba -ba -ba -ba. Yeah, so um, Rachel said she signed up for a baby class prepaid, knowing that it wouldn't go ahead face to face, but that it would continue online with no refund. And she was happy with that. Um, Laura to everyone, what, what, what? <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, I think that was so, be back in person until February, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I know, it's really sad. I'm really sad about that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think so. They're basically talking at the moment about uh, we'll have Christmas and then they're going to put us into another five week lockdown, which sounds like loads of fun. Um, but, you know, we've got this far. <laughs> um, what's the benefit of having Linktree? So there's two schools of thought with Linktree and anyone who doesn't know what Linktree is. Linktree is just a software that you can. It's, it's basically an app that you can bolt on to your um, to your Instagram profile. So with Instagram, you only get one link. Unless you've got over 10,000 followers, you don't have the swipe up feature, which lets you link through to different things. So if you have less than 10,000 followers, what Linktree does is lets you say, there's a link in the bio, but it lets you have, multi it basically links to a landing page that has multiple links. So if you were to have a, a blog post that you were referencing, you could link them to the blog post, but you could also have a link in there to your services. You could also then have a link in there to um, to your, like to go straight to your website or to go straight to your booking page. Um, so that's what Linktree does. Yeah. There is a. Sorry. 
I, just, I, won't, I won't keep me off mute for too long because I've got a little one in the background. Um, thank you for that. So, because I've got a, a booking page on my website, obviously. So then, if you start, that sorry, that one link to be my booking page link. So I was just trying to work out as in is it better to have Linktree and then people go to Linktree or is it better to them go directly to the website? If you've only got one link, then go direct. So if you've only got one link, go direct. But it might be that you do a, you know, if you were to do a Zoom session that you were offering for free to get people to sign up for your email list, it might be that you have access my free Zoom session or book a, you know, book a class. So that that's when the you'd have the advantage of having Linktree. But if you've only got one one link, link direct to it. You want as little friction as possible between what you're offering and and somebody getting to where they want to be. Right. Any more questions? Um, <laughs> yeah, Rachel. No, I'm totally with you, Rachel. Yeah, don't apply. Don't apologise for for beautiful babies. I'm totally. I love like I love working the way that I work now because I used to work in a really kind of corporate environment and so many of my one to one sessions now take place with me doing this at the screen because the person I'm chatting to has got a baby on their lap and so they're laughing so we have the funniest loom calls but yeah so no don't worry like it's uh, it's all good and I love working this way so yeah definitely don't don't apologize for that um any other questions from anyone right Pete this is your moment this is my moment um <laughs> where where do I start because I haven't got um, any clients, no website, no business Facebook page. And it's, I'm just getting completely overwhelmed by the whole thing. So it's like, I'm just crawling up into a ball and going, I'll deal with it tomorrow. What do I need? Yeah. What's the, sort of my first step? What do I need to, I mean, so in, a, in a normal world, I would just be going down the pub and saying, all right, lads, I'm doing yoga classes starting um, next week. Who's up for it? And yeah. It, simple as that but in covid land it's just like what, do you know what i mean i'm like a rabbit in the headlights i've got no idea yeah so what what do you want to do first are you going to do zoom classes until you can do in-person classes or are you going to do one-to-one -one stuff outside with people until you because there's only a couple of things we can we're actually allowed to do at the moment so you you can meet one person outside and exercise with them outside um or you can do Zoom classes. So what are you thinking? I'm thinking wait till it gets back to normal or wait wait till, I mean, I've, I'm really hesitant with Zoom. I'd like to put some sort of free content online and maybe a business page and just so, just to build up a bit of interest and a bit of like, oh, this is going on and try and get some interest going. But, you know, I've just got no idea. Yes. So keep it really, really simple. At the moment, if you're using Instagram, which I know you are because we're, we're friends on there, um, you know, you could do an Instagram live and do a live session. So you could put a post up and say, I'm going live every Tuesday or every Wednesday at this time. Um, I'll see you here. So, you know, you can put a post, you can put that up in your stories so that people start to know that if they come to you at that time, you're going to be there then you can, you know, this is something that I didn't say, but if you're, if you're new to your business, it's the one time that you can really lean on friends and family. Um, because once you've been in business for quite a long time, like they don't really want to hear about your business anymore. Um, but when you're, I mean, actually, I think that's different if you're a yoga teacher, because who wouldn't want to do yoga? But um, yeah, you know, I think you can, you can then say, I'm going to be doing yoga at this time on Tuesdays, come along. Like, you know, just here's, here's the link to my account, you know, join me at this time. And you can just do that on WhatsApp or text message, whatever, and make it really easy for people um, and just kind of build it up that way. Like if you haven't got a Facebook page or you don't use your Facebook page, I mean, I've got, what I would say is I've got a personal page, but do I need a, like a business? I mean, it's like, what do I do next? Do I do a business per Facebook page? Do I? Keep it really simple. 
keep it really, really simple. I know people who've got seven figure businesses who don't have a business Facebook page. They get all of their business from their personal Facebook page. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, bring it right back to how can I simplify this? Like, how do I make this as easy as possible? Like, what am I most comfortable with? If that's going, doing a Facebook live, do a Facebook live. If it's doing an Instagram live, do an Instagram live, but keep it really simple because the more you complicate it, the more technology you try and add in, you know, the more tasks you, you give yourself, the harder it is to just keep going. And the reality is that people will want to come and join you for yoga. So if they know what time and where it is, they'll come and join in, you know, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or Zoom, whatever, um, they'll come and join in and you can be building your audience that way rather than thinking, oh, I've got to build this, I've got to do that and then I'll contact them. Like just, just start simple, keep it really simple and then build the other stuff later. But you don't, you know, you certainly don't need to build a business page. You can just do it on your Facebook or, or your Instagram. Thank you. You're welcome. And let me know, because I'm definitely coming along. <laughs> it will be all over my social media, so you won't be able to escape it. Yeah, brilliant. Any other questions? Um, yeah, so uh, Lauren said, keep being hilarious. You can save and repurpose that content too. Yes. So yeah, definitely. Just, you know, you can use that again. So if you're doing your Facebook lives or you're doing your Instagram lives, make sure you save them at the end. You get the option to save them. Save it, download it, because it, you can chop that up. So in the future, when you're not so overwhelmed or if you can bribe your kids to, to do some video editing for you, you could take like a one minute session. I was looking through my Instagram posts and seeing which one's got the most engagement. And I did, I did a time lapse of me doing some yoga when I was on holiday in South Africa. Um, and it's, you know, it's literally like one minute of me doing Warrior Two. And for some reason, people engaged with that. I can't remember what I wrote on the post, but you know, that was the one that people engaged with. So you can take something, it might have been a half hour, or, you know, or an hour long session. You can take one minute from that, and that can be a post that you post in six months time or in, in three months time. So yeah, it's a nice way of getting additional content Then you don't have to keep thinking, oh God, now I need to go and stand outside, do a yoga pose, take a picture, set my camera up and all of those things. It's quite a nice way of build like batching all of your content for the future as well. Danielle, can I ask a quick question? Um, so I'm uh, uh, concentrating at the moment on building my audience on social media. Um, I'm new business. I'm not going to be in a position to have products to sell or classes to sell until kind of Easter next year, really. Um, so I'm building that audience. At the moment, as I'm building that audience, I'm in a little echo chamber of yoga teachers. And I really like the tips that you've given about how, like an ebook or a guide or things like that. How can I promote those in a way that builds the audience, but that, that's avoiding it being clickbait? Um, I mean, I don't think anything. I, I think if you put real value into an ebook, it doesn't become clickbait. You know, clickbait is, um, guess what Meghan Markle didn't tell you about her dad? Like that's clickbait, yeah. you know? You know, giving somebody an in-depth ebook that solves a problem, like that's not clickbait at all. That's, you know- but Can I say to people um, like, like this, share it, tag a friend and, and then you'll get this ebook, or is that because I'm thinking about by tagging a friend, you might then it's those birds for feathers stick together. There might be similar people who would be interested, um, and to build the audience outside of um, like yoga teachers, so it's actual potential clients. Yeah, I mean, again, it sort of it depends how you want to how you want to communicate with people and where you want to get them. If you want them on an email list. Um, then just you can set up a landing page on Mailchimp, so you can you can have the the ebook there for them to download. They put their their email list in, and they get the ebook in the automated reply. Um, 
if that technology, you know, if that whole system makes you think, oh, Jesus Christ, like now I've got to go and set this up. I, there's no way I can do that. Just get them to DM you. You know, there, there's really kind of simple ways. Take the blocks out. So if it is a case that you just, you don't want to get involved in any of that tech stuff, it terrifies you, just say DM me for the, and I'll send you the ebook. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, what I would do is I would keep promoting the ebook in different ways. So you maybe have like, you know, don't just say I've got an ebook available. Talk about that ebook in like a million different ways because there'll be different things. I mean, if I were to to turn this session into an ebook, I've got thirty different subjects and I've talked about them in I don't know how many different ways and I've shared different stories, not for necessarily each of them, but I've probably got case studies for at least half of them, you know, personal experiences that I could talk about and at the end of it say, if you want to see the, the full session, you know, click here and, you know, and, and get access to the full thing. Like, you know, if you're interested in this, in this topic, then I've got a whole ebook that is designed to help you do this. DM me for the link. Cool. Um, now that makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's what I do. But I definitely wouldn't worry about it being clickbait. It's, you know, think about it in terms of an energetic exchange. You know, cool. their, their, their energy is their email list or, you know, getting into your DMs so that you can, you know, add them to a group and then message people when you have got something that you can sell to them. Um, you know, and, and just let them know, just, just drop them an email saying, you know, here's the, here's the link to the ebook, follow, you know, keep following me because I'm going to be doing some live sessions, you know, and I'm hoping to be back in, you know, hoping to be in person in, you know, in April, I'd love you, you know, I'd love to see you there, but, you know, in the meantime, you know, let's, let's stay in touch on, on Instagram. Lovely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions? I can't see everyone. Hang on, let me just do this. Is anybody waving at me? Nobody's waving at me. I really hope that that was helpful. Um, I hope that I answered everybody's questions. And I hope what I would suggest, because having sat through so many Zoom calls myself um, and thought, yeah, that was really good. What I would suggest is that you maybe circle the three that jumped out to you the most, um, the three that you thought that that would, yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna do that. That's a really good idea. Circle those three and put a date in the diary that you are going to have done those by. So, um, you know, what, whatever, work out whatever action steps you need to take, whether it's packaging your services or if you are going to, um, you know, if you're going to go and find somebody in, in a, um, like to be a referral partner, you know, put that in the diary and make sure that you take those actions. Because if you don't put it in the diary, you won't, you won't do it. So maybe circle the top three, like keep, keep these notes and keep them somewhere safe that you can come back to them. But, but look at the top three and think, right, okay, I'm going to do those first, um, get those in. And then obviously, once you've done those, then you can say, okay, well now I've, I'm gonna start looking at all of the long-term things that I need to be doing for my business. So I'm gonna put those into place by the end of February. Um, you know, if, if we can't be in person before the end of February, that, you know, start of February, then I've got a few weeks that I can maybe do a couple of these projects um, and, and have those in place because the, the long-term stuff definitely works. Like, you know, all of Simon's clients now come through one of those long-term strategies you know he doesn't have referral partners um so it's it's all the ebooks it's all the emails it's all of that stuff that people come to him through so it's it's really kind of it's, it's a really kind of valuable thing to do for your business to have those longer term strategies in place um but yeah definitely start with the kind of right what can i do now or what appeals to me the most and then do it um so yeah that is it for me today. I've not done too badly for the time. I've only gone like 15 minutes over, which is like amazing considering how much I love to chat. So thank you so much. I've really loved sharing with all of you. Um, and it's been lots of fun. It's been lots of fun to see you. I miss all your faces. I miss seeing you in person. 
Um, but you know, this is the next best thing. So thank you. Um, and let me know how you get on. So when you've actually done one of these things and if you've got a client, come back and just let me know um, because yeah, I love, love to hear everyone's success stories. So it'd be really great to hear from you all. So yeah, that's it from me. And I will, I'll chat to you all online soon. Take care. Bye. See you later. Bye.